Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Rachel here back again with another great video from Oak and Lamb. Today we're going to be sharing with you print and cut what it is, how you do it, the simple in and outs of how to use it. This is something that is great for so many different projects. We use Print and Cut all the time here at Oak and Lamb, and it is available on all the Cricut machines on the market today, except for the Cricut Joy. The Joy does not have the capability to do Cricut Print and Cut, but all the other Cricuts that are being sold right now can use Print and Cut, and it is an amazing feature when you get the hang of it. All you'll need is your device that you connect with Design Space, your Cricut, a Cricut mat, a printer, and some cardstock. This can be regular printer paper, it can be heavier cardstock, whatever you would like to do. We're using an inkjet printer today. This is our Canon Pixma TS22, or excuse me, TS8220. There's a lot of numbers involved. It's a great printer, but we do love all of the Canon Pixma line of printers. So really, it doesn't matter. Whatever kind of printer you have, it will work. We are using an inkjet printer today. We're going to be using a really cute cut file that is exclusive here to Oak and Lamb. If you guys are interested in becoming part of our flock, click the very first link in the description below to see what you are missing out on. We have an incredible community over there filled with so many amazing crafters and we would love for you to join. Without further ado, we'll head over into Design Space and share with you all how we're going to create this Print and Cut project. Okay, here we are in Design Space, and the most important part about your Print the Cut projects is choosing the right cut file. Here is the one that we're going to use today. It says, I'm not a control freak, but you're doing it wrong. This is so funny. We're going to use this just as a panel today. You can add this to a card or whatever you want. We will have some more training on different types of Print and Cut projects with Print and Cut um, heat transfer vinyl, print and cut regular vinyl, we're gonna have those, but today is just a very basic um, walkthrough of a print and cut project. Now we have a PNG, which is a portable, portable network graphic, and we have an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. The SVG you can see is in different layers here in Design Space. You can take these and change the colors, things like that. Whatever you want to do, you can do that. Um, and then on the PNG, you cannot change any colors or anything like that. Now we do have some videos on how to upload SVGs and PNGs and the differences between them. We have some really good beginner uh, videos for Design Space. So if you are a true beginner, definitely check out those videos over on the YouTube channel. There's a lot of, of things to learn over there. Um, so it really does not matter which of these you use. You can make both of these um, into a sticker. You can make both of these into a print and cut image, so it really doesn't matter which you use. Now, PNGs are the ones that are most commonly used for print and cut projects, but again, like I mentioned, you can simply flatten an SVG just as easily, so let me share with you what that means. Here you can see we have one image, one layer. Here you can see there are several layers. If I were to take this with all these layers selected and go down here and click flatten, it changes it to one single layer, just like the print and cut. So as you can see, he now it says print and cut here and print and cut here. So it's really easy to transform SVGs into quote PNGs to be able to be used with print and cut. Um, so it's as simple as that. Here is this one, I'm gonna size it down a bit. One of the most important things to know about Print and Cut is there is size restrictions in Design Space. Do you see this here, this kind of caution symbol? It means our uh, design is too large. The Print and Cut size restriction is 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches. And as you can see, I'm well over that right here. So I'm gonna bring this in and size this down until I know it's went away, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller here too. And this looks good for us, we'll keep it about right here. Now one thing that I wanna do is add an offset to this. You can simply go through and print and cut this out if you want to, but here's the catch. It will print and cut every little letter by itself, and we don't want that. I want this to cut as one solid image with like a little bubble behind it, and that is what the offset is gonna do for us. 
Now again, this is just one example of the many different ways you can utilize Print and Cut here in Design Space. So what I'm gonna do is click Offset up here and it's gonna think about it and it's going to have me an offset. So I'm gonna actually scoot that over so we can see that better. And you can see where that blue line is, is right where the offset will be if I click apply. I can take this toggle right here and make it fatter or I can bring it down and make it skinnier, things like this. Uh, so it's totally up to you how thick you want your offset. We're just gonna keep it about right there. That looks good, so I'm gonna click Apply. And at this point, you can also click uh, corners that are squared or corners that are rounded. I like the rounded corners myself. Now I'm gonna click Apply. And you can see it applies it as a dark color. We're gonna make sure this is selected and we're gonna change this color to white. So I'm gonna change that to white right there. And now you can't really see it, so I'm gonna change the color of our canvas so that you can see it. How you change the color of your canvas is by going over here and clicking blank canvas. Once that is selected, your top options will mostly disappear except for this one right here that says color. You can click color and change your color of your mat, or excuse me, of the canvas. And now you can see this offset really well. Now I want this offset here right at the print and cut, right where it is. So what we're gonna do is click with our mouse Select and drag all of these together. Now you can see both of these are selected. Now we're gonna flatten this all together. So one of the layers is already flattened, it is the print and cut, but we're gonna flatten our offset onto our design. So we're gonna click flatten. And now you can see it's all one image. This is exactly what we want. So this is gonna cut out so, so beautifully. So what we're gonna do is click make it. And we wanna make sure our correct um, Cricut is selected and it is not. We're using our Cricut Explore 3 today. So once our correct Cricut is selected, we're gonna click Make It. And here you can see how it will look once it's printed on the mat. I will share with you what this black box, box is here in just a moment uh, once it's printed, because you might be thinking, well, that's not how that looked in Design Space. I don't like that black box. What does it do? What is its purpose? It actually has an exceptional purpose. So we'll go ahead and click Continue and it's gonna connect to our Explore 3 via USB cord. And we have some pretty heavy um, card stock here. So after we print, we'll be setting our base material, which is gonna be heavy card stock. So what we're gonna do now is click Send to Printer. And you can see the little um, preview of it right here. We have our printer already set up. We will have some videos about how to set up your printer with your computer if you're not sure how to do that. It's a very easy process, especially via Bluetooth, uh, to do that. So we're not going to include this in this video because we're just going to assume you have already got your printer connected. Uh, so let me know if you'd like some uh, training on that as well. So we have our printer selected here. We have the number of copies. We have Add Bleed turned on. And I will explain right now what exactly Add Bleed is. Add Bleed is a feature in Design Space in Print and Cut projects that allows the printer to spread a little bit of extra ink all around the outside of your design. The purpose of this is for when the Cricut goes to cut your design, if the Cricut happens to cut it you know, a sixteenth of an inch off or something like that, that extra ink that the printer spread on that project will not allow it to look like a project fail. It will allow it to look totally fine even though it cut a little bit off. It just gives you a little extra ink on the edges of your designs. Um, we also want to toggle use system dialog. What this is going to do is allow you to have some extra print settings to be able to up the quality of your print and select the tray that you want to print from on your printer. Uh, so this, this is going to be something great. We use this on every single print and cut project and it says Important, after clicking print, your print dialog may appear behind your design space application. So we're gonna click print, and then we're gonna go ahead and minimize the screen. And here you can see our print settings. Now we're gonna go ahead and select to feed this from the rear tray. If you guys have a printer that allows you to print from the rear tray, please do that. It is much easier than doing it from the bottom tray on most printers. And if you're not sure what a rear tray looks like, I will share that with you as well. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and change this quality toggle from normal to best. We want a really good quality print. 
So now you're gonna go ahead and click print. And here we have our printer ready for us. It is on. We have placed our paper in the rear tray. Now this is what I mean. This is the rear tray. It is so much better for thicker papers than placing it in the bottom tray. So we love using it whenever we can. We love that we have a printer with a rear tray. If you're in the market for a printer and you don't already have one, it's not a bad, bad idea to look for one with a rear tray. Now, not just for card stocks, but for when you decide to go and dive into the world of printable vinyl, printable heat transfer vinyl, some of them do not like being ran through the printer. It's much easier to have them slide one direction than it is for the printer, if it was in the bottom tray, to go up and over. So that is one thing that we love about a rear tray. And you can see that printed out beautifully. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into Design Space again and we're going to select our material setting. Now this is heavy cardstock. You can see we don't have it on our favorites. So we're gonna click Browse All Materials. I'm gonna type in heavy and heavy cardstock. You can see that right here. And if you wanted to favorite something, you can press that little star right there. Now I'm gonna click Done. And I'm gonna give this a little bit more pressure. This is something you can do if your Cricut has a bit of a dull blade. If you're almost needing to change your blade, but not quite, uh, you can go right here after you select your material and give that more pressure. There's also the option to give less pressure. And this would be something that can be used if you would like to uh, use a brand spanking new blade. Sometimes new blades are a little bit uh, really, really sharp. They're pretty sharp. They cut through things. So this is a great way to click less pressure if you have a brand new blade and it will cut a little bit less because it's so, so new and it won't ruin any projects or anything like that. But now sometimes you won't have that issue so you might not ever have to use less pressure. But right now we're gonna use more pressure. Now we're gonna go ahead and load our design, our printed design onto our mat and allow our Cricut to cut it out. We have our cutting mat here. And you are always going to apply your print and cut projects in the top left corner of your mat. And we like to use a brayer here, especially if we have a well-loved mat, just to add our paper onto our mat well here. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is this black box around your project. This is called registration marks. This is what you need for all print and cut projects. This little black box is what is the key to allowing your Cricut to do its job properly when doing print and cut. So these registration marks are going to allow your Cricut sensor to scan and sense around this box to know exactly where it needs to cut. Otherwise, how would it know? So you'll have a black box around every one of your print and cut projects. It is essential. Don't worry, it's not gonna be a part of your design. The Cricut uses it to scan these lines here to know exactly where to cut. So we get to watch that in action right now. Okay, I'm just gonna load this in and you just wanna guide it in these little grooves here and press your load button. And now the Cricut's gonna go through, measure the mat and make sure we're good to go before we can press our start button. And now I can press start and you will see the Cricut is going to go through here and use the sensor. A little light will come on and it will go through here and sense all of these registration marks and make sure it's going to cut this with all the accuracy it possibly can. Now, one thing I will mention as well, if your cut does not seem perfect, it might be because you need to calibrate your Cricut machine. Now, calibrating your machine is not something a lot of people talk about. It's not something that is highly spoken about needing to do with your machine, but it is a Cricut maintenance uh, feature that you need to use often. So what we do for that is we have created a video, Becca created it, and it will teach you exactly how to um, do that with your Cricut, exactly how to calibrate it. And it is a fantastic video if you think that you might need it. She goes over uh, tips on how to do it properly, uh, little signs to look at when you might think your Cricut needs to be calibrated. So signs to look out for, um, which is really, really nice. But you see this is almost done cutting. And it's gonna cut through twice since we did give that more pressure. Now we just have to unload our mat. 
And now all you have to do is remove your material from your mat. Now we, you can do this a number of different ways, but for paper especially, our favorite way to do this is by placing our mat face down on your work surface and peeling your mat up from your material and not your material up from your mat. This will help your paper from curling, which is a big problem in paper projects. And there you have it guys. It is so easy to use the print and cut feature with your Cricuts. We went in there and added a, a offset and everything, which is amazing. It's a super easy process. Don't forget if you think you need to calibrate your machine to watch that video Miss Becca made. It is a great one. It's something that many people don't know they need to do. It's a great type of Cricut maintenance that you guys can do uh, for your machine to keep it running properly. I hope that I was able to instill some confidence in you guys when creating your own print and cut projects. If you're interested in more print and cut projects, definitely keep an eye out for some more training we've got coming on our YouTube channel. If you guys did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more amazing videos like this one, and leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. Here at Oak and Lamb, we have training on a wide variety of different types of crafting, from the Cricut, to the Glowforge, to sublimation, woodworking, sewing, home decor, and more. If you're interested in mastering any of those amazing types of crafts, we would love to welcome you to Oak and Lamb. Click the very first link down below to see how you can join our flock today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.